I've had dozens and dozens of people reach out to me with this exact same issue. Don't fall for this trap. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about an issue that does affect quite a few people. I have people reaching out to me over this exact issue quite often. Now, I received an email message, one of many I've received, about this exact same type of problem. Basically, the person purchased a massive lot of items, a bunch of stuff. They sunk a ton of money into it. Uh, in fact, let's just go on over right now. Let me read you a couple segments of their message to me. Now, I do have permission to share a section of this email message. I did talk to them. I did help all I could. I did make a bunch of suggestions with this issue. Now, I'm going to start a little farther into here. I don't want to give out anything personal. I don't want to give out other information that they don't want shared. But it was a huge lot, and I took three trips with my truck to get it all. It was a massive amount of stuff and I figured I couldn't go wrong. There was just too much stuff, but so far not much of it is uh, worth nearly what I thought it was. But now six weeks later, uh, and I've only sold a handful of stuff and it's taken me so, and they've added several uh, oh so long to just sort through and look up stuff. I'm way, I'm I think they're meaning I'm in way over my head and don't know what to do. I won't have enough money to make rent in just a few days. Now, this arrived a few days ago, so just FYI. In just a few days, with most of our extra money is or is tied up into all this stuff, I can't believe this happened. Now, they went into some other detail on the actual products, the stuff that they actually bought. Now, it was a massive amount of stuff from somebody else who was supposedly getting out of the business. Now, when I purchase stuff, and what I would recommend everybody doing is if you're purchasing from somebody, try and figure out where that stuff came from. Ask them a bunch of questions on where they got it from. Many times when I have went through a bunch of merchandise, like thousands of postcards or records or whatever the case may be, I go around and resell it just as it is. I'll throw it up somewhere, put it on eBay or wherever else I can sell. Locally is fine with me as well. Craigslist works good for that. So that's what I would do with the stuff. I wouldn't buy the kind of material that I'm selling. You know, I, I you can look through it all you want when I sell something. I don't just say, it here, take it, you're done. So anybody buying it, if they buy it at whatever price I have, that is up to them to determine what they think it's worth to them. If you're not up or don't understand or don't know the type of items that you are buying, you can have this happen to you. I've had many far worse cases than this one where people were just so far over their head. They thought for sure quantity means a bunch of sales. Quantity means easy money. And it's just never that way. If, if I'm going to buy something or somebody's asking me, hey, does this look like a good deal at this price? A lot of times my patrons will send me a link to uh, something they want to bid on or something they're interested in and things like that and ask my opinion on it. My first thought is, how are you going to sell it? Regardless of whether it's a big lot or a small lot, you, you've got to be able to look all that up. You've got to be efficient with it. Even if, let's say, it looks like for sure some of the stuff's going to go for some good money, you've got to consider all the time you have invested into it. So just picking up three truckloads or three van loads of, of merchandise, maybe hours of your time, depending on where it's at, loading it, unloading it, sorting it, um, shelving it, photoing it, all that stuff takes time. Now, in this case, it's collectibles. It was vintage items, books and things like that. There were some comics. There were some other things, cards, figures, a bunch of records and music, things along that line. Again, quantity does not mean there's value there. We've sold off thousands of records. In many cases, 5000 at a time for, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars $700. These are lots that we've went through. But quantity, it's still worth that to the right person. Again, it depends on your knowledge of the items that you are selling. If you don't have a clue on them, or again, you just look up a couple of items and you're going to invest thousands of dollars into a massive purchase, man, that's just highly risky for anybody out there. This can be a major trap, and it's something, as I said, that a lot of people fall into because you just assume, you know, you trust somebody's word on the value on a lot. 
you look at the quantity of that lot and the value that they're stating and you assume, yeah, wow, there's no way I can go wrong. And as I said, even if you look up stuff, make sure that you're randomly looking at stuff. Make sure you're not pulling stuff that they have right up on the top and stuff to look up first. Those might be seated. A lot of dealers, and even uh, a good example of this is like a storage unit. A lot of times, a storage unit place might not be on the up and up. They might seed a locker, a storage locker or a storage building with some good stuff in the front that shows up in their photos that they take to show you what's inside of it. If they've opened up the locker or storage unit ahead of time to show those photos, they've got all ample opportunity to do something. Now, I'm not saying they all do that, but I've seen reports even here locally from people that have been scammed on stuff. They were able to produce proof that some of the items in a locker were the same ones from a sale a month before. They just reused those same highly collectibles when it didn't sell and they put it somewhere else in a different locker, a different number in a different location. Don't ever take someone's word on what's there. You need to look up enough as well on whatever you're buying to know for sure you're going to get your money back or I don't buy it. Now, if it's like 25 bucks for 500 records or something, Chances are you should be able to make some money off of something like that, but there's no guarantee even at that cost. Again, looking up 500 records might take you some time if you're not into records. If you don't have the skill to flip through something and eliminate all the low-valued items as you look through them, it's going to take you a, a world of time to, to get those up, to get your money back. So end of story here is don't invest money unless you know you're going to get a return on it. And again, you always, 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 always have to consider your time and effort into whatever you buy. And that's one of those things that, especially if you're new and you've never run a business or anything like that before, that's one of those things that most people will miss. They won't be judging or including their time, their effort into whatever they're going to sell and list. If I'm out somewhere and you know I can make some money on something, but it's big or it's going to be a hassle, chances are I'm going to move on to something else just because I don't want to waste the extra time on it. I can find something of a comparable profit margin with less work, less effort involved on me. I'd rather work smarter than harder for the same amount of money. So again, I don't mind passing something up. If you watch some of my videos in the past, you see I pass up stuff. It's not, I pick selective items. I pick items that I personally know. And if I don't know them, I'm, I'm going to spend a heck of a lot of time researching them before I shell out a good amount of money to purchase them. This is, this is honestly a major trap for a lot of people, especially, as I said, when you're first starting out. Don't be deceived by somebody. Don't be deceived by quantity. People say, you know, hey, you've got a lot of quantity up online. Well, that quantity came from assortments that I've handpicked the best stuff out of. It's not everything I buy in mass quantity is worth listing. A large chunk of what I do buy in mass quantity, like records, for example, probably isn't going to make me a fortune. Paper is a little different story. Most of the paper I can at least sell, whether it's in a, a lot myself or bulk or whatever, I can always seem to get my money out of stuff like that. But again, I, I know those categories. I know those items. I'm not, I'm not running the risk. Now, we were lucky in the past. I never had the money to sink into these lots to risk it. So when I was buying stuff, I had to be darn sure that I wasn't going to blow it, that it wasn't a risk, because that's money that I can't use to pay my bills if I'm shelling it out for something else. In this case here, they shelled out most of the money they had, assuming in a six-week time frame, they'd be good to go with that. They can't go out and source because all their money's tied up into this lot. So they can't go out and pick out other items until they start to offload some of this somehow. They may have to sell it locally as well in bulk lots here and there to get enough money back in to be able to pay bills and to move forward as well. Now, it's not the end of the world. There's a way around it if you work through it. You can sell some in bulk on eBay as well. That's always an opportunity and an option. Bulk lot, you know, junk drawer lot, those still work if you got the right items. It's more selective these days, but those are still options. If it happens to you, don't give up. It's not the end of the world. It may be drastic. It may be a rough time again until you get the money back, but it's a doable experience. Most of the folks who have reached out to me have been able to overcome this issue. It's a learning experience as well for everybody when this happens. You're not going to do it again. 
an extra 30 or 40 minutes of research or an hour of research into the a purchase of this size for thousands of dollars would have probably saved them. I would rather do the research out there in the field than purchase it and find out at home that, heck, I messed myself up and blew it. I spent a lot of money on something I'm not going to get back. Uh, one other thing I would say, if you can't afford to have that money sit for an extended length of time on any purchase, I wouldn't recommend purchasing it. I can afford to buy thousands of dollars worth of stuff and not have it sell for a long time. It doesn't matter as much to me. It's not a huge of an issue because we routinely sell enough stuff that it's not going to sink me. But it's taken us years to get to this point to be able to do this. If you're just starting off, don't risk the money in your bank, the money you use to pay your bills on something that's not a sure shot, a, new, a sure win for you, unless you're 100% sure that you'll at least get your money back fairly quickly. When you're first starting off, it's quickness, it's time, it's, it's turnover. You've got to turn over merchandise to keep the business going. And if you can't do that, that can end you. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.